Well, hey there, my friend. Welcome back to the show. I'm Deanna Yates, and you're listening to episode 161 of the Wannabe Clutter Free Podcast. On today's episode, I'm chatting with Michelle Perda, a marriage coach and mom of three, about how we can rally our families and get everyone on the same page. You might have noticed a slight change to the format today. I am making some back-end changes to my show as it has grown so much over the past year, and I want to make it the best podcast for you that I can. So there are going to be lots of great changes, but my new hosting platform doesn't allow for a teaser at the beginning of the show with the intro spliced in. So now the intro is going to be just a little bit different. The rest of the flow is going to be just the same. So if you're still with me, then you probably won't notice much else different. Today's conversation is going to be fun. I am chatting again with Michelle Perda. You may have heard the episode where I was a guest on her podcast, and I talked about how decluttering can help the relationships in your home. And we got along so well and have similar philosophies that I knew I wanted to have her on this show to help us with those tricky conversations. You know the ones I'm talking about. Those conversations where you talk to your family about decluttering, buying less, organizing, and tidying up the home especially if your family members are less than enthusiastic about the process. But before we get into our conversation, I want to say thank you for joining me today. I appreciate that you're here, and I hope you walk away from today with some actionable ideas for your life. If you enjoy what you hear, can you please do me a favor and leave a rating and a review for this show? You can rate the show on most podcast listening apps, but you can also leave a review on Apple Podcasts or a comment on a specific episode on Spotify. Or these new guest episodes, I am getting them up on YouTube so you can come over there and comment on the episode as well. I would love if you could just take a minute to give me and the show a shout out. Your reviews are what help me reach more listeners and get more amazing guests on this show for you. So thank you so much. And now let's learn about my amazing guest. Michelle Perda is a mom of three, marriage coach, and host of the Marriage and Motherhood podcast. She helps parents feel like a couple again by teaching them how to manage conflict together and make their relationships a priority while raising kids. After experiencing her own relationship struggles and becoming a mom, she noticed how challenging parenthood was on marriage and how many issues couples were facing that were completely fixable. Now she's on a mission to help parents realize that they don't have to choose between being a good parent or a good partner because they can be both. Give this episode a listen, and when you're done, head over to wannabeclutterfree.com slash 161 to get the show notes for today's episode with links to Michelle's website, resources, and more. And I will also have a link to when I was on her podcast, so you can check that out too. Again, you can find it all at wannabeclutterfree.com forward slash the number 161. And now let's get to our conversation. Well, hello, Michelle. Welcome to Wanna Be Clutter Free. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. I'm super excited to be back. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. This is going to be a lot of fun. We are going to be chatting about conversations for a happier home. And I think this is just a really good time to be having those conversations. It's early summer for us over here. And it's one of those transition times. And so I feel like whenever there's a little bit of a transition, it gives you kind of a, a foothold, right? Kind of just get your foot in the door a little bit for how we, you know, maybe we can change things up a little bit. So I'm really excited to talk about that today. Of course, we always talk about decluttering and organizing and all that kind of stuff. And your focus is more on uh, families and partners and mother and uh, motherhood and marriage. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how you help busy families. Yeah. So I am a married mom of three. I've got a 13 and a half year old, a almost seven year old and a three year old. And I love to help families create that special like connection, right? So I specialize in marriage. So I work with both moms and couples, depending on what's going on with the family. And I help them be able to reconnect, whether that's improving how they communicate, whether that's helping them remember who they are as individuals so they can come together and choose to grow together as a couple, right? Like whatever the situation is, I'm here to help them know that it's not about, oh, it's only for lucky people to be Mm -hmm. in a happy, successful marriage. It all comes down to having the skills to then implement into the relationship so that you can build on the relationship no matter what stage of parenthood that you're in right like 
I get it. Like when you're a couple and you don't have kids, it's so different than when you start <laughs> to have kids, right? Your yeah. priorities shift, you have less time, you have less energy. And also it's just very triggering all around to be a new mom or even a mom of multiples. And we start to go through this transformation where we're meeting ourselves again, but we don't have necessarily the time and energy to sit down and be like, hmm, let me think about this, right? And so what I love to do is help my clients give that space to them to do what absolute needs to be done in a way where it's, okay, this is the fastest way for you to figure out what's going on with you bring you two together and then set you up for a successful path for the future that so that you can enjoy your marriage for decades to come. Okay. So that's what I do. And I'm super happy to be here. Oh my gosh. I'm thrilled to have you. This is going to be a really fun conversation. A lot of my listeners and readers and people are always asking me, how do I get my family to do this with me, right? Like Mm. I've decided I'm in, I've decided this is what I want to do. How do I bring those other people along? Because again, you don't want to be dragging people, kicking and screaming. Nobody wants to be nagged into anything and nobody wants to uh, feel like they're being forced to do something against their will. (laughs) Definitely not. Um, No, definitely not. So you had a recent post on Instagram that talked about getting your partner on the same page or getting on the same page as your partner. And so let's talk about that because again, this is one of the biggest reasons people fight, I think, is they're on different pages, right? They have an idea of what they want and how do we get there together? Yeah. So this is one of the skills that we all need to learn collectively to enhance (laughs) our communication skills. Because I think what ends up happening is we focus too much on the details, the Mm. specifics, and we get bogged down by, well, you want it on the left side of the room and I want it on the right side of the room and there's no middle, right? Like it wouldn't make sense to put things in the middle, right? So instead we need to put into practice zooming out and talking about the bigger picture, why do you want it there? What what feel are you trying to go for? What is the overall like goal that you have? Worry less about the specifics, like how you're going to get there and let you open up to the different possibilities of what could happen if you could just let go of the controlling nature in you that needs to have things your way, which I am one of those people, right? Like I constantly have to be like, okay, Michelle, there are different ways that we can accomplish this. (laughs) And so when you open up to that possibility, both people can then contribute to the end result rather than two people being adamant about having it their way. And then you butt heads and then you Mm -hmm. talk about things that don't even matter. And the fight becomes irrelevant to what you're actually trying to do. So if you're like, I want to declutter because we have too much stuff in this house and it's really overwhelming. And you can kind of just sense in my voice, like I'm starting to get really frustrated and stressed out. And I'm betting Mm -hmm. that a lot of people out there are able to relate to that when they have those discussions, right? Or maybe they avoid those conversations because they're like, oh, I just don't even want to go there. Mm -hmm. But if you're like, hey, you know what? I, I think it'd be so much more relaxing in this home if there was more space in here. Don't you feel like it would have a better flow if like things were more organized or, or, if we were able to cut back on some things and we can do this and we can do that, and it would feel so much more just peaceful and harmonious. What do you think about that? Or how do you feel in this home? Like, I really feel like it's been feeling heavy lately. Everywhere I turn, I just see something that I wish were somewhere else, or I notice something that we don't even use anymore what if we can just do like a home refresh and design and organize the home in a way where it works for us as we are today and what we need at this specific stage in our life versus what we've kind of just built up to over the years because we have gone through so many changes. Mm -hmm. If you kind of like approach it in a very like hopeful, dreamy direction, 
you're not talking about the specifics where he could be like, well, I still use that. And no, I need that still. No, my mom gave that to me or my great, 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 great grandpa gave that to me. I'm not letting that go. Right. It's not about the specific things that need to go away. It's about the general feeling you're trying to accomplish and the functionality that you want to uh, accomplish with your family. And when you can get on the same page of, okay, this is the goal that will help you to, to make decisions that align to that goal. And you know what? you might just like end up getting rid of the stuff that you've been wanting to, but at least you're not pinpointing like, hey, we have to get rid of this and then getting this defensive reaction from your partner. And then it just like stalls or doesn't even start. Right. Well, and so what you pointed out there, there was a couple things. And the one I want to right at the end is where you were pinpointing out the things from your partner. So I feel like what I always see are people will say mostly women, because again, I work with mostly women and they're saying like, you don't use this or you don't use that, or you've got all these tools you never use. And maybe we get rid of this and maybe get rid of that. The problem I see is that you're not sharing the things that you're getting rid of also. Right. Yep. So they're feeling super defensive because they're like, why are you just attacking my stuff? And it's because we're not having these conversations out loud. We're not saying, Hey, i I'm decluttering my closet and I'm going to look at all these things that I got rid of from my closet. You're not having people go through that process with you, which is totally understandable. If you want to do that on your own, that's fine. If you're the person that's jumping in, but you also have to share and tell people, it's almost like you have to narrate your life a little bit. Like absolutely life is not a movie, but I also feel like there are points in movies that we can take because I think everybody deep down, like wishes life could be a movie, right? I wish life could be a movie. I wish I could know what my, there was going to be some happy ending at the end, of course. And, but life is not like that, or maybe it will be, but we don't know what the outcome is going to be. And there's always a narrator, right? That's helping move the story along. And I feel like we could do that a little bit in our lives. If we're having, we want our people to come along with us and be like, So last week I got rid of this, this, and this, and not saying that you have to get rid of exactly the same number of things, but I just wanted you to be aware that I'm also working on this process. And I would love if you would come with me (laughs) and inviting, and and like you're saying, the positive side of it. Yeah. And also just describing the process you're using to get rid of the stuff, to Mm -hmm. declutter, right? I noticed that I have so many clothes that I don't even wear anymore. I'm just hoping I will fit them one day, but I've accepted that I'm getting older. My body has changed, especially after becoming a mom. And so I just went through it. And if it doesn't fit and I haven't worn it in over a year, I just put it in the bag. When you do that, that can yes. kind of get their gears turning. Or like if you're going through your closet, right? Like the the black hole of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, you know, you know, I found this. I haven't seen it in five years. I must not need it. And all right. it is doing is collecting dust. And you can just, like you said, narrate your process. And you're not yeah. necessarily saying, hey, I want you to do this too. But it might spark motivation and inspiration. Yeah. And And he might notice, oh, wow, it does look better now that we have less stuff here. It does feel better. You seem happier, right? You can even describe how you feel after getting rid of it. It's like, oh my gosh, I feel like weight's been lifted off me. I feel like we have reclaimed our bedroom or our closet. It's so much easier to find things. Took me three minutes to get ready this morning. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Right. So yeah. Using that and narrating it, sharing it, it's a whole lot better than, hey, can you like figure your stuff out? Because yeah. it's like taking up a lot of space and it's pissing me off. Right. right? Approach oh gosh, matters. Totally. Yes, for sure. But also, we only control ourselves. Yes. And the moment we try to control other people, they're going to. They're going to do something, right? They're going to fight back. (laughs) They're going to dig their heels into the sand, whatever it is that their go-to method is. Either way, they're not going to be willing to be open to the process. So if you just like kind of let go, right? Loosen your grip a little bit and share your process. Do whatever you want to do with your stuff. Just watch. 
Yeah, for sure. And I've seen that time and time and time again. And it's so hard to like for people to believe me when I say that, but like, if mm-hmm. you start on yourself and you are truly in it for yours to make yourself feel better, to get rid of the things that are holding you back, it is palpable. And the people yes. that are the closest to you, which are your family members are going to feel it. And it just becomes contagious. They start to see things going on. They think, Oh, it just, it just sparks something in their mind. And they think, Oh, that's now a possibility where before it wasn't even a possibility because, and I know this has happened too, right? We talk a big game, right? Sometimes we'll be like, Oh, we're going to declutter. We're going to do this big declutter. And you do, you start, and then there's this huge mess in your house and it, and it, everybody's just frustrated. And so we try not to do those big declutter sessions. Se- like I try to tell people don't do the giant declutter session. It is just overwhelming. And it's almost counterproductive to getting your family on board, right? We don't want to make more work, but if once they see it and they can see it and they feel it in you, they are more likely to get on board because they think, oh, you are serious this time. Instead of the three times we've tried before and we petered out after an hour and nobody wanted to do it anymore. And it, you know, I mean, nobody really wants to do a giant declutter session. It's hard. It's hot. It's unfor- It's just, ugh. it's a whole workout. <laughs> nobody wants to do it. And so, yeah, it's like you get more bees with honey than with vinegar, right? Isn't that the saying or something like that? I've never heard that, but that you've never sense. heard that. Oh yeah. Something no. like that. All right. Anyway, I probably butchered it. <laughs> <laughs> so what about with kids? I know motherhood and marriage, you're obviously focusing more on the parents, but how do you think this would play out with kids? I, I have my own ideas, but I'd like to hear from you as the expert in, uh, in this. In yeah. This. <laughs> so for me, we are a very much like we've stopped buying toys for our kids because mm. we just assume like when their birthdays roll around, someone else is going to get them toys. And when it comes to decluttering with them, right, what we've done for the younger people <laughs> yeah. is if we notice that they don't use something, we'll put it in a box mm-hmm. and we'll hide it in our closet for a little bit. And if they ask for it, we'll take it back out. But if they don't ask for it, it's pretty much gone in their head. So we then donate it, right? But Mm -hmm. for the older kids who do notice what's going on, we will try and bring them into the process and be like, hey, it's kind of getting out of control here. I'm noticing that you have a lot to clean up. If you don't like to clean, Mm -hmm. if we have less things, it's easier to clean. It's easier to put things away and Plus, we'll have space for new things that you might acquire over time. And so we'll just go through each item. And I feel like even for us adults and your spouse, right? Like people Mm -hmm. love to be included, to have a say when it comes to their own stuff. Nobody likes to have things like taken from them and feeling powerless and out of control. And someone's the the grand decider of like our stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Like. When you like, okay, so my younger kids, when my youngest daughter, she has something of her brother's and he tries to take it from her, even though it belongs to him, what's her natural reaction to take it closer to her. Right. (laughs) And so it becomes like this, like battle between them. Same thing. We want to try and avoid having that power struggle Mm -hmm. with our kids and bring them into the picture of, Hey, like the cleaner we have the house, the more often we can have your friends over, the more space yeah. we have to play, the the better it feels in the home, the more you can run around, like whatever is relevant to your right. kids, right? And so I think the more we involve them, the better it is. But but also knowing that young kids, they love their stuff. They do. Right? They're like the the worst hoarders, in my opinion. Like they love the Costco receipts and oh, the little random like- yeah, deflated balloon. Oh like, God. come on. That's basically garbage, but it's important to you. But okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we yeah. have a treasure's bin because that those things definitely need a home because otherwise they're everywhere in our home. Yes. Right. And so uh, she has a bin that basically we'll go. We try to declutter and go through her things about every six months, right before her birthday, right before Christmas, which are our big gift giving holidays in our house. And you know, so we will definitely go through things and 
I'm always surprised sometimes by the things she is ready to let go of and the things that she wants to keep. It's, it's always a gamble. You never know. So, uh, but that really helps giving them a place to live and then a place that they can then later make a decision on. And if that bin gets full, you decide how big the bin is, right? And then make it a game and they can decorate it or it can be plain, whatever, whatever works for you guys. And then once it gets full, they can make the decision, right? Well, oops, your treasure bin's full. It's not going to close. It's not going to go back in the drawer. It's not going to whatever. Uh, I think it's time for us to look through there and see if there's any treasures you're willing to give to someone else or come up with some story, right? You, I mean, there can be, there can be treasure fairies that come and collect it off the porch. Yes. There's all sorts of fun things that, um, that can happen. So there are treasure fairies out there that can collect things off the porch. It's pretty cool. Oh, definitely. <laughs> we have like a buy nothing group listening. up here. Oh my gosh. We do too. And I love those that. are incredible. So like anytime I notice that they haven't played with something, I will ask them like, Hey, I haven't seen you play with this in a while. Are you ready to pass this on so that it can make another kid happy? You know, yeah. and sometimes I'll, I will get that. Yeah. And sometimes I'm like, no, I still, okay. No. <laughs> right. Yeah. You can tell, you can tell in their reactions for sure. Yeah, definitely. But yeah. So, oh my gosh, I love our buy nothing group. It's also a perfect way if you do a declutter session to just put stuff out there. So you don't actually yes. have to take it to the donation center, right? Exactly. Like, even if you're like, who the heck is going to want this stuff? You can just say, Hey, I have a free, I have a bin of free stuff on my yard. Come grab it. And you will be shocked at how many people will come grab that stuff. So absolutely <laughs> super easy way to get rid of that. Okay. I love all of those ideas. And again, the approach, like you said, the approach is so important. It's always surprising to me how, yes, again, if you, just add a teensy bit of magic to it. It really changes the whole thing, especially for your children. So yeah, I love that. So we've talked a little bit about it, but I want to go back and reiterate just in case, like I know we talked about like getting on the same page as your partner. I really want to deep dive into broaching the subject of clutter with a partner. So let's start from the very beginning. Let's say that you are, someone listening is like, okay, I am noticing there's a big problem. I want to declutter the house. I'm terrified about having this conversation with my spouse. Where do you suggest they start? Start with your own stuff and just let them know what you're doing. Okay. Any conversations in particular you would start with? Just share like how we were mentioning early, just share what you're doing because it's your stuff. Like why do they need to be a decision maker in that? Right. Right. And then once they notice the impact, you could then kind of be like, oh, that felt so good. I just my desk is cleaner. I feel like I have more energy to do things. I feel happier. And then you can maybe you can start with the kids, too. If you're really hesitant about coming around to your partner and broaching that topic, then do everything you can that's within your power and then be like, hey, so what do you think about, or have you noticed the change in our home? Is this something that you're interested in doing? I'd be happy to help you out if this is something that you want to do. And if they say no, then you kind of have to accept it, but then you can kind of play around with it if it's impacting you, right? Like, Mm. okay, well, I'm noticing that, or you could say like, hey, we don't necessarily have to like get rid of your stuff, but is it possible to maybe relocate it? Mm-hmm. The things that maybe you're not using on a daily basis or a regular basis. Is mm-hmm. there space in the shed, in the garage? Can we organize it so that it's easy for you to find whenever you do feel like you want to access it? So mm-hmm. that it's not so much of, oh my God, you're going to get rid of my stuff, but now I have to decide and he might not be ready for it, right? Right. But it's more of a conversation of, oh, okay, we're just reorganizing. That's fine. Because you never know in that process, he might come to the realization like, oh, I actually don't use this. Right. Maybe it is time to give it back to my friend, give it away, get rid of it, whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. But we have to be conscious of how is this impacting them? Right. Mm -hmm. So don't ambush them. Don't force the conversation. Make sure it's good timing for the conversation, uh, that they're ready for it. And, and also, Hey, how would it be like for you if someone were to pounce on you like that and say, Mm. Hey, 
it's time to, you have five minutes, pack up the stuff that you don't want and go. (laughs) Yeah. It doesn't feel good. No. Right. And so think about it. Think about if you, like for me, like I do most of the cooking right in the house. So I enjoy it. I'm better at it. So I just do it. (laughs) And um, if someone were to come into the kitchen and tell me what I could and couldn't keep, that would be really frustrating because I'm the one that's in there all the time. Or if you have a craft room, someone coming in and saying, you can't have those things. You got to get rid of that thing. And you're like, but I like that thing. I want to keep that thing. And so it's right. Thinking about in terms of your own items and the things you want to keep. I always like to put that in perspective. Like when we're dealing with our kids or our partners or someone else, you know, obviously not ourselves. If someone were to do to you, what you are trying to do to them, (laughs) how would that make you feel? And then just think about how you would want someone to approach you. Golden rule, right? Absolutely. (laughs) Because the way you value something is going to be potentially different for them. You might see this like piece of junk and he's like, oh, that's really meaningful to me. So we cannot be the ones that decide what stays and what goes. You absolutely need them to be the decider. Otherwise, you're going to just get into a lot of fights and resentment, and we do not want that. (laughs) No, definitely no. We're definitely not causing more fights. This is more understanding, a more gradual approach. uh, Yes, respect. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. Right. Because again, everybody has their own likes and wants and there's a reason you married this person. <laughs> exactly. Kind of get yeah. back to that. What What are the things that you really appreciate about each other? So uh, what about for family that doesn't live inside our homes? I'm looking at generous <laughs> grandmas. Any conversation points to have with uh, these lovely, wonderful people that are in our lives that just, honestly, they're just trying to sh- share love and show us love. Yeah. But sometimes it doesn't come across the same. How do we help with those conversations? Yeah. So I think just keeping in mind they mean well, right? And also how would you like to be approached if you were the generous grandma in this situation? Mm -hmm. But if this were me, thankfully it's not me, but if this were me, I would let them know what you're trying to accomplish, right? Like, hey, we've noticed that our family functions better when we have less things, the kids get along better and play for longer when it's toys that allow for like imaginative play so less less of the character figures and more of like legos or fort building stuff train sets like whatever like more montessori style stuff we found that will provide endless hours of play whereas if you were to get them like i don't know like an action figure they'll play with it for like five minutes and they'll forget about it for months Mm -hmm. and If you really want to give gifts, I highly recommend, I don't know, getting something for them to use outside uh, or like something that's active and exercise, exercise related, or even like a membership to the zoo or Mm -hmm. an activity, or maybe your gift to them could be taking them somewhere or having an overnight, like they are going to love experiences in the long run more Mm -hmm. than the actual thing. They're going to make more memories doing that. But if you must give them something that they can unwrap, then maybe this, like give them suggestions. And I know for my parents, I love to give them like a wish list because it just makes things Mm -hmm. way easier for them. So you can provide guidance, but if they really love gift giving and they love the process of doing that themselves, then you could just give them general guidance. Like, Hey, this person's been wanting a bike or Mm. I've noticed that they're really intrigued with skateboards. Maybe you can get that, but they can pick it. Right. So Mm -hmm. if they want to be like, Oh, I found this for you, then you can do that as well. So there are numerous ways that you can do that, uh, approach this like topic, but for those with parents who absolutely don't care, right. If they don't care. Yeah. You're going to just have to take it for what it is. And I know some people who actually, they will save the gift and give their kids and space it out Mm -hmm. throughout the year. Okay. I think that's genius. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think that's genius. But if they're giving it to the kid right on the spot, then yeah, yeah. I think you might want to have a regular decluttering protocol that you follow with your family and and they just know the drill. But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you can't be like, yeah. no. <laughs> well, of course not, right? Well, and it, it's interesting because I think there's different scenarios here, right? Like you have the mm -hmm. the grandparents that are super generous at the holidays, like you were yes. saying, and maybe you could space those out. That is a nice, yep. interesting way to do it. Because again, the kids get so many gifts in one moment yes. that it's really hard for them to process them all. And they can't give attention equally to everything. And so if you could space those out a little bit, that would be wonderful. The other problem I see are the grandparents that you see frequently and they're always bringing something, right? Those are the challenge. I think that's the biggest challenge that people face when they are dealing with grandparents. And I think if you have a conversation where you say, we appreciate you so yes. much, and I understand that you're trying to share your love with your grandchildren, they really love being able to spend time with you. They would love if you would take them out for ice cream instead of bringing them the thing. We are, they already have yes. so many toys. Bring um, them snacks. <laughs> bring them snacks. Bring them stuff that they can just use right up. Yep. Um, absolutely. And even, and when like family travels, so I know my family, when they go, if, I, if my parents are going somewhere on vacation or whatever, visiting family somewhere else, they always like to bring something back. And food is a great place, a yes. great thing to share. So see if they can find invented candy, right? I know lots of people don't want to give their kids candy. It's not a problem in our house. We don't binge on the candy right away. So right. I uh, that for us is a great solution. But if candy is a problem in your house, then maybe they can bring them like an activity book from the place or something that they can actually do and participate with. Or one time our, um, so her uncle, my husband's brother. Okay. Let's get that brother-in-law. That's the word I'm looking for. My <laughs> brother-in-law. Gosh, that took me a minute. He brought back a, like a train, like, like a Lego train set from where they went. And it was, you know, themed to where they had been on vacation, which was great. Cause now mm -hmm. she got a Lego, she got a toy. It was themed, you know, it had all these little things that kind of went together for it and she could repurpose it into other things. So I think having ideas, being the person that can be the idea person, for your loved ones, if you're struggling, instead of just being like, stop doing that, give them right. a solution helps. Absolutely. Because at the end of the day, like you are probably grateful that they are constantly thinking of how to love on your child. Yes. So that's not the issue. It's the approach that you are wanting to adjust. So if you're able to talk them through with like, hey, keep loving on my kids. I absolutely love that you think of them, that you yeah. are constantly like trying to think of ways to help them feel special. Please keep doing that. Are you able to do that in ways that don't contribute to us having a lot of stuff in the house and then give them yeah. examples? And also, if you've just gone through a giant declutter, share again, share that process Absolutely. with them. Share the fact that you've been on this journey, that you've gone through all this stuff, all the hours and effort and whatever you've put in, how far you've grown so that they are like, oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> you know, and I know that I get, I get that people get really nervous about that because they think, but they gave me so much stuff. And if I decluttered it, I don't want to tell them that I decluttered it. But it's like, at some point, you're going to have to have this conversation. And so you might as well have it now versus them spending how much more money and how many more hours and how much more stuff and you resenting it more and more and more. And it just builds up. Yes. So have it now before it gets more out of hand or you continue to have to do it. Don't hide stuff from your family. Thoughts on that? Yeah. No, and you don't need to do that, right? Like yeah. if you if you share with them what it is that you're overall goal is and the impact that it's had on you, you can also reinforce like, hey, I want to make sure that however you're thinking of making my kids feel special actually stays with them and has the impact that you want. And I'm noticing that when you bring over these little trinkets, they kind of get forgotten and they just end up on the floor. And I'm thinking that your money and your energy and your thoughtfulness would be better used 
by hanging out with them more or yeah. you're getting them something like uh something unique to that place that you went to, whether mm-hmm. it's like a cup or a t-shirt that says that location or a snack from there. And I just want to make sure that the memories stay alive in that and you're not essentially contributing to things that we're constantly having to declutter. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. What other conversations should we be having for a happier home? Because I know that there are areas where there are struggle for a lot of families. And because we focus so much on the decluttering and the organizing in our stuff, are there any other conversations that can kind of help as we get into these deeper or different kind of conversations? There's a lot. (laughs) What are some of your favorites (laughs) or what's one of your favorite conversations that people should be having? Yeah. So I think again, going back to zooming out, thinking about the bigger picture, I think we all need to be having conversations about what we see for our lives, for Mm -hmm. our families, for our marriages. When we have that, that goal and we are agreeing on that goal, it makes things a lot easier. So for example, right, like for my husband and I, our time together is top priority. Our time with our kids is also a top priority. Being able to do our own things, priorities. So like having that conversation of, hey, what is most important to you? How can we make sure that we're setting up our lifestyle to fit that so that we're constantly moving closer and closer to where we want to end up. So we've actually restructured the way we do our schedule and, Mm -hmm. and we, we now know why we need to stick to a certain schedule so that it can help us fulfill these areas that we say are a priority for us because it's important. So for example, like, so it's important for our kids to be in enriching programs. So uh, the two younger ones are in swim, all three are in jujitsu and my middle child is in occupational therapy. All of that are like, they're all priorities because they're all helping them develop in some way. So we set those up in on certain days and we say, okay, on those days, we're going to do very, very easy dinners so mm-hmm. that we can still get them to bed on time. And then we can each do our own thing at night, like whether I go work out or whatever it is. On Tuesday, Thursdays, that when that's when we don't have anything going on, and we have family time followed by us time. Hmm. So that's mm-hmm. something that we hold ourselves to. Obviously, there's times where it's like, okay, we can't get out of this, and we're gonna have to like just not do it this day. But it's an absolute right. priority, which means dinner needs to be done by this time. We need to start eating at this time, and we all like you take the kids, and I do dishes, and. And we do bedtime and then we are done by this time. We are leaving their room by this time Mm -hmm. so that we can then hang out together, right? Or we can play Uno flip with them and then we have to be upstairs by this time. But that can only happen if they're all the way ready for bed by this time and we start playing at this time. So we have boundaries for ourselves to be able to live the life that we want. So thinking about, hey, how do you want your your family life to be like? How do you want your married life to be like? How can you restructure your day to allow for that, right? If you're constantly on the go, burned out, there's probably some things to take out of your schedule, right? Maybe saying yes to fewer things and really aligning to, hey, do I really need to go to all those birthday parties? Do I really need to be that type of Pinterest mom? Does that even bring me joy? Does that like, or does it suck all the energy out of me? Mm-hmm. Do I really need to be the the most helpful friend where anytime someone needs me, I am there in a heartbeat? Or can I be more selective about how I support my friends and reserve that energy for what is truly a priority for you, which is for me, my marriage and my family, right? And so when you have that bigger vision, you can then kind of like do a, a check and balance of, hey, does this get me closer to this? Does this help me fulfill that? If not, then I have to like consciously decide, hmm, is this worth it? Hmm. Is there a different way I can accomplish this on a different day it, by uh, by doing something different that takes less energy and time 
Or maybe I just say no and feel unapologetic about it. Hmm. No, the saying no and feeling unapologetic, always a struggle for me over here. But I love that. I love the idea of, and I talk about this too. So the starting from where you want to be and working backwards, exactly. Don't start with where you are and try to cram more in. I feel that with time, with you, your obligations, with the stuff in your house, it's like you almost have to, like you said, zoom out. Like, yes take a minute and have an out of body experience where yeah. you're looking down or you're almost like looking back a little bit morbid. But if I were like, what do I want people to remember me? How do I want people to remember me when I die? Like, how do I want my family to remember me? What do I want it to have felt like living here, growing up here, being married to me, being <laughs> married to my partner yeah. and having that moment of, okay, what do I really envision for our life. How, how do I see that? And then working backwards and working on the things that you want to keep. And yeah, maybe you do want to be that friend that is like, no, I always want to be that person that's there for my friends. As long as I already have my family taken care of, right. There can always be that if then too part of it. And maybe I don't need to be on my phone so much. Like the phone addiction, uh, you know, my gosh, struggles real struggle is real. And Uh, our daughter is 10 now and trying to figure out like when she should get a phone. Thankfully, not a lot of her friends have phones. So that's not a big, you know, you're lucky. We don't have that peer pressure. No, I know. Uh, very lucky. I feel like we're in a little bubble here and, but yeah, that's going to happen in the next couple of years. Yeah. where the kids are going to be getting phones and we're going to have to have that conversation of no, we're planning to wait a little bit longer. And what does that mean for her? Now that doesn't mean she doesn't have access to things like YouTube or a computer or whatever, but it's not in her pocket and it's definitely yes. supervised and we're getting way off topic. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just those things, right? Where you think of the bigger picture and working backwards to that. So Um, yeah, I absolutely love that approach. I'm a huge, huge fan and advocate. So, um, because if you're just trying to improve what is just by, like you said, adding stuff in, you're going to have way less progress and change because you're trying to tweak something that you're trying to like almost reshape something that's existing rather than Mm -hmm. creating something new. So Mm -hmm. if you could just feel how that feels. Okay. How does it feel to have to like mold something into something else versus starting fresh, right? Starting fresh is almost like, like you get that deep breath of, okay, all right, this is what's important. Let's fill in the rest now. How does everything else fit in? And then it's kind of like that treasure box that you said, right? Okay. What's essential? What's uh, negotiable? And then work with the stuff that's negotiable and be like, okay, is this actually vital, important, Mm -hmm. urgent, or can I delegate it, right? Can I get rid of it? Can I do it faster or lower my standards, right? When you work with what is negotiable, that's where your free time and your free flexibility comes from, not what is most important to you. That's stuff that you should never compromise. Mm -hmm. Mm. So true. Mm. I love it. I absolutely love it. Well, Michelle, it's always a joy and pleasure to chat with you. You always drop some wonderful information. And uh, so I want to know like where people can find you because I know everyone listening to this is going to want to come find you. So where should they do that? Yeah. So since you're listening to this, I'm assuming you love podcasts and I have my (laughs) own podcast. It's called the marriage and motherhood podcast. So head on over there. If you want to learn tips for how to create a deeper connection with your spouse, how to communicate in a healthier way so that you can connect better with each other. And if you love that, come join me in my Facebook group also called the marriage and motherhood. I'd love to have you. Perfect. Super awesome. And we'll definitely have links in the show notes. So if people are out and about and they didn't get a chance to write that down, they can just click on through, uh, make that nice and easy. But my favorite way to end each interview is with three rapid fire questions. And so the first one is what does being clutter-free mean to you? Ooh, 
Okay. So clutter free to me means that everything has a place and that what we have is an intentional choice for us to keep. Yeah, it's great. Number two, is there anything that we maybe missed today or that we talked about that you want to reiterate? Like if there's one thing that people took from today, uh, what do you want them to know? I would say the more intentional you are, whether it's with how you connect, how you communicate, how you approach certain topics, how you declutter, be intentional. Because when you do that, you're going to react less. You're going to get a better outcome with your relationships and you're just going to be better received and you're Mm. going to feel better about the decisions that you're making. Mm -hmm. Mm. Good. And then the third one, what is making you happy right now or in this season of your life? Hmm. So what's making me happy right now is that I am finally in a routine where family life feels amazing. I am regularly connecting with my husband and I am giving myself time. So a couple times a week, I'm doing like hit exercise routines in my home and it feels good to feel like I'm getting stronger and taking care of my body and being more mindful about how I'm eating. Like I had no idea how much, or no, I should say how little protein I was getting until I started paying attention to how much my body needs. And that has made a really big difference in my focus, my clarity, my energy level. And it's just like, it just feels good. Mm, That's awesome. Well, and you've given hope to all of us because you have a 13 year old and you were just saying how happy your family makes you right now. So that is amazing. So I, oh, (laughs) yay. That's great. I mean, because I think so many of us that don't have teenagers yet are kind of nervous about that time. But look at you, you at three, one being a teenager and a three-nager. Like, honestly, you are like on the spectrum of both sides of like, (laughs) oh. I mean, there's moments, right? There's moments, but overall things are really good. And I feel like we have a nice system that allows allows for everyone to really connect with each other and feel seen and heard. Mm. And just, it's awesome. I love it. I love it. Right. All about that intention. So it is true. You're walking the walk. You're not just talking. I definitely do try that. (laughs) I love it. Me too. And I think that's why we get along so well. So Michelle, thank you so much for joining me on Wanna Be Clutter Free. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks for having me. Bye. Wasn't that great? I know, like I said at the beginning, Michelle and I had very similar philosophies, and so I knew that you would get a lot out of our conversation. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on the episode. What were your favorite parts? Did you have any big takeaways? Send me a DM on Instagram or comment on this post. I am wannabe clutter-free on all the social channels. Or come over to the Wannabe Minimalist family group on Facebook and share with the community. There will be a discussion thread for this episode, and we would love to chat with you in the comments. Or if you're already on YouTube watching this, go ahead and leave a comment so we can have a conversation. And thanks again to Michelle for joining us on the show today and for sharing so many nuggets of wisdom. Remember, she has resources available to you. So head on over to wannabeclutterfree.com slash 161. Again, that's wannabeclutterfree.com forward slash the number 161 to find out more about Michelle. And as always, thank you for joining me too. If you made it this far, just a reminder that I would be thrilled if you left a rating and a review for the show. It will only take a minute and it means so much to me. So thank you so much for helping me out. And with that, I hope you have an amazing day. I will see you back here next week for another guest episode. I will be chatting with Amy Nesbitt about focusing on the joy in our lives, what that has meant for her family and She and I have a fun project coming up. We're working together on something and we share that with you next week. So make sure you join me so you don't miss out. I'm Deanna Yates and you've been listening to Wanna Be Clutter Free. I'll see you next week. Cheers.